Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this is Metellus. I'm going to do an audio commentary f uh, for you today on the Undead vs. Undead matchup. I'm going to show you two games, uh, the first of which is my own, and the second is the professional level, which uh, will show 4K Fury vs. Ma SK Madfrog. So why don't you get the first game loaded up, uh, my game, at the 15 second mark, one time speed, under my vision, 40 ounces to freedom. And I'm going to sync up as well right now. And I'll introduce you to the game and maybe an introduction to myself as well. I'm Metellus. I've been at the site for about a year now. Um, this is my first official audio commentary. I had one uh, made before for patch 1.19, but of course 1.20 came out right away, so that one got kind of screwed up. But uh, hopefully everything will go all right on this one, and we'll be able to get underway. So I'm just loading up the replay right now. Um, my opponent today is Gosu Leg. He was level, a little over level 30-ish, level 31 and 32 when I played him. He was top 50 solo, so he's got decent stats. And... Yeah, so hopefully you guys are at the 15 second mark right now. What we're going to go over today in this audio is how to beat the mass gargoyle uh, lich strategy. And why don't we get this underway? So unpause in 3, 2, 1, unpause. So I am going crypt, uh, crypt ziggurat altar. And basically, um, it doesn't really matter in my opinion whether you go Crypt Altar Ziggurat or Crypt Ziggurat Altar because really it's only about a second or two that your hero gets out faster by going Crypt uh, Altar Ziggurat. And really it takes a lot longer for a Lich to come to your base, your opponent's Lich to come to your base and harass. So really um, it's just personal preference in my opinion. So basically what I do at the beginning of the game, uh, I get my second ziggurat right away and then I accumulate 30 wood with my ghoul and then I go off to scout. And basically in this game I'm going to show you um, how to use fiends against mass gargoyles. Um, really the do's and the don'ts and I'm really going gonna, gonna to try and go over his perspective as well. What he should have done and what mistakes that he made. Uh, because it's important to understand both sides of the spectrum to be able to learn from it. So I've got my 30 lumber, I'm putting up my temple, uh, Tomb of Relics, and I'm sending my ghoul off to scout. And basically what I'm going to do with my ghoul is I'm going to harass his acolyte, uh, try and maybe harass his Tomb of Relics. Really, if they're a decent player, they're not going to accomplish anything major unless they suck. But if they're a good player, which this guy is not bad, um, you're, he's just going to move his uh, Acolyte around and upgrade a, uh, a new Rubian Tower. But really, um, in my opinion, that really does damage him as well, because by taking that Acolyte off the gold mine, by taking his Ghouls off Lumber, I'm costing resources and I'm forcing him to upgrade his new Rubian Tower. So really that's giving me an advantage, uh, no matter how small, but it's still an advantage. So basically I'm just kind of uh, hanging my ghoul around harassing. I'm going to make sure that he's going the Lich. It's also viable to go Dreadlord or Death Knight or I've seen crazy Crypt Lord rushes. Anything's possible so I'm trying to stay away from that uh, Nerubian Tower. Just make sure that he's going Lich first. Basically what I like to do early game is not play too aggressively at the start. I like to go out and creep and try and get level 2 and then maybe attack. But uh, my opponent is going to make his first mistake. Um, basically what he's going to do is he's attacking my ghoul, but normally my ghoul would get away and he wouldn't be able to kill it. But he makes a decision uh, to nova my ghoul. And really a first mistake right there, well first of all I didn't kill it in one nova, so he's going to have to make a choice to use a second nova. And as soon as I see that second nova, I think, okay I'm going to ghoul rush, I'm going to try and fight him because he's at 60 mana while I'm at 300 mana. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a few more ghouls. 
I'm going to slow down my tech a bit, but I'm really going to try and force him to fight me. And normally, if in a circumstance like this, I could, it's very possible for me to win the game right at the start if he wastes his mana like that. Normally, I prefer to tech at around 22 or 24 food, but now that I'm choosing to ghoul rush, I'm going to need more ghouls uh, at my home base, so I'm going to tech at about 28 food or so. So right now I'm just checking to see if he's creeping, looking for a creep jack. I see the lich wandering out. Um, I don't like doing the old Nova and trying to surround this early. Uh, I'd rather just try and fight him. So I go into his base, I don't want to wander in too far. Although I didn't know that he only had four ghouls. Had I known that, I could have possibly pressed the attack a lot further and going into his base. But I didn't know that. So basically I'm doing the next best thing by taking out his second crypt and taking out his uh, graveyard. Basically, if you guys want to know a really annoying thing for any race to do to undead, take out the graveyard. It's a really important building and it takes a long ass time to build. So, if you take out that graveyard, it's going to slow their production of gargoyles, it's going to slow their creation of a slaughterhouse, and it's just really, really annoying to have to deal with when you're trying to make gargs and they keep taking out your graveyard. So I don't want to wander too far, too far into his base. Um, I'm just going to try and stay on the outskirts. Maybe try and draw him out. Who knows. But I did notice that he had put up the second crypt that I had taken down. So when I reach tier 2, I'm going to choose to start making fiends. Which, um, time properly, will counter his gargoyles effectively. So I'm just going to back off right now. I don't want to go too far into his base. Um, I'm just going to try and creep and get level 2. And having any hero level advantage, especially early game, obviously is a big deal, but even more so in Undead vs. Undead. Because having the ability to dark ritual the skeletons and getting mana faster is going to be a huge, huge impact on any battle that you fight in the game. The ability to gain mana faster and be able to produce more uh, frost novas on his ghouls is going to give you a large advantage. And it's it's game uh, game winning decisions like that, or game winning abilities like that. It's going to give you a large advantage right there. So right now I'm almost at tier two. Uh, one thing I noticed that he does, uh, one mistake that he definitely does this game is once he reaches tier two, he definitely doesn't harass me enough with his gargoyles. When you're going uh, mass gargoyles, as you're going to see later in the Fury versus Mad Frog game, you definitely want to uh, put pressure on your opponent's base, harass their weak ghouls, harass their acolytes, uh, and just cause problems for them because uh, until you have a sufficient amount of gargoyles, you're in a very uh, vulnerable position because you can't creep very fast. But you can harass their base because your opponent isn't going to have a sufficient amount of fiends yet. So really that's what my opponent should be doing right now. Um, but he's choosing to creep, which isn't very effective. So I'm a bit low on lumber right now. I go back to my base and let my ghouls um, regenerate a little bit, get some more lumber. My death knight is almost out. Death knight is the most crucial second hero in the undead versus undead matchup. I've seen games where players don't choose to go the death knight second, and basically what's going to happen is they're just going to, your opponent is just going to focus fire a lich because there's no effective way of healing him. I've seen games where uh, they would just frost over the lich and just use destroyers to focus down on him and he'd either have to waste money on buying uh, teleport scrolls or invulnerability potions or healing potions. So you always want to get death knight second, it's very important. So I see him creeping right here. Um, I could have tried to first around the Lich, but I didn't get it, so I'm just going to finish off this creep camp right here. I don't have any fiends yet, so I really can't fully out-engage him, um, but I think he does come out here, and I'm just going to use my Lich to focus down his gargoyles and use Nova to try and pick some of them off. Um, I make a mistake right here. I coil the Lich. I saw he was a little bit weak, and I decided to coil him. I really should have coiled the weak ghoul right there because it's going to get focused and die, but whatever, it's better to be safe than sorry, better to keep the Lich at full health rather than risk losing your hero. So I got my one fiend out, so I can start trying to pick off his units. 
He really, really shouldn't be fighting this battle right now because I have fiends. He should be pulling back and he should be either trying to lure me into his base or trying to harass or something like that. So now I'm almost on my way to 2 3. I'm a force going to get frenzy. And I think I'm going to get abominations because you typically don't want to get um, destroyers against mass guards because they're going to get ripped up fairly fast. And right now I don't have a sufficient force to go into his base, so I'm just going to creep and try and get level 3 on my lich because level 3 is a pretty critical hero level. Um, if you take a look at his base, he's going to start using shades, which is definitely a smart idea in Undead vs. Undead. And perhaps in future games I might even start using shades. Um, and as you're going to see later, he does a nice trick of unsummoning his sacrificial pit once he has a couple shades out. And this does a couple of things. Uh, number one, it's going to um, get the resources back by unsummoning. I don't know exactly uh, what percentage it is. I think it's like 75%, but it's a good percentage. So you get resources back from it. And then B, if I scout his base... Um, you know, I'm not going to be able to tell that he's using shades, so it's definitely a, a smart <coughs> strategical choice on his part. So he's got his Death Knight coming out, he's got his Gargs, he really, I'm going to say it before I'm going to say it again, uh, he really should be harassing me. It's not efficient to be creeping with, you know, two ghouls and six Gargs, you can't do it very fast, your Gargs are going to be weakened and you're going to be forced to, um, forced to use coil on them. But right here, he's going to come and creep jack me, which is definitely a smart choice. Uh, he could get fiend kills, could uh, get item steals, whatever. It's a smart decision. So he's going to come in, and I don't. Th I think I, I just finished frenzy, but I don't want to fight this battle yet because I only have three, uh, three fiends, and really that's not a sufficient amount to fight, in my opinion. I could have fought, but I was a bit. Uh, nervous and really in this game you only want to fight the battles that you know you can win. So basically what I do is I select my Death Knight and Fiend uh, hotkey group and I press S to stop what they're doing and they just basically auto web the gargs and I just pull back and if he wants to keep trying to attack me he is going to find his gargs um, outnumbered and they're going to lose so He's not going to come into my base right now, which is a smart decision because my web cooldown is almost done. So I don't think I lost much uh, in that fight. I don't think I lost anything, maybe a ghoul or two. And now I have a sufficient amount of fiends that I feel that I can uh, fight him. And I got my ghouls from my base and I got my statues. So I'm going to go try and pick a fight. Really a good uh, rule of thumb when you're fighting fiends against gargs is really you want to try and have about half the amount of gargs. If you've got half the amount of gargs, you should be able to uh, be able to defeat him fairly easily. So he's still got that shade on me. He's going to come back and try and creep jack me. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, one thing that he definitely should have done if, is if he saw me going fiends like this, he should have produced more ghouls. Uh, you definitely need more ghouls to put pressure on the fiends. If you can put pressure on the fiends and you can f stop me from using focus fire on his uh, gargs, it's going to uh, bring more of an advantage your way. But he doesn't, so I'm just going to use my uh, fiends to focus fire his gargs. And really there's not a lot he can do right here. He doesn't have uh, a sufficient amount of gargoyles to be able to focus down my fiends properly. So he's forced to teleport out. So basically, as you're going to see uh, later in the other game, once Mad Frog sees that Fury is going uh, fiends, he's eventually going to he's going to build up a, a larger army of ghouls, which is uh, really what you want to be doing. You want to be getting a good amount of ghouls to put pressure on the fiends, to take out the fiends, and once you can limit the number of fiends, then your guard is going to be much more effective. So now I'm at tier 3, uh, I'm at 50 food, I don't want to go into low upkeep yet, I'm going to start um, I'm going to start massing gold, and eventually I'll get my third hero, Dreadlord, and I'll just, uh, once I go into low upkeep, then I'm going to continue massing and producing units until I get to 60, 70 food, because once you choose to go into low upkeep, it doesn't benefit you at all to stay at like 53 or 54 food, because you're losing the gold, um, 
You're losing the gold from low upkeep, but you're not really taking advantage of it. 